they said I was too quick as far as uh, strapping my load um, I almost don't want to get outside because of this place is in my opinion hazardous but I'll, I'll, I'll for you for you I'll do this I only have time to do this because they said I was too quick in in uh, strapping and tarping my load uh, because I was when I came in the office is around the corner and uh, that's where I was told to get my paperwork after I was done with this portion but a guy called, came out and said well at 3 o'clock they switch so you'll just come into this back door and uh, yeah let me get back inside perhaps you could maybe it'll catch it in the uh, it's hard to see through the camera if you see it glinting the sun off of this silica carbide material uh, I think that's what motivated me to be quick um, I wanted to spend as little time as possible out there so I think I did it in like 35 minutes um, you remember, see this uh, spot right here I grabbed it with my gloves whoop, after I'd been doing my strapping and this is the uh, probably just dirt for my gloves because <laughs> my gloves are dirty um, where am I at hmm, I, I hate to even say because I have a lot of negative feelings right now and I don't want to disparage anybody or any place <laughs> my negative feelings are about this product or I should say the environment in which I was loading um, in my previous career in the, in the military, I did, uh, I took care of individuals that exposed themselves to very dangerous materials. In my first assignment in Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, they do uh, missile testing of all sorts there, uh, usually ICBM missiles and space launch vehicles. Uh, they have the Atlas, what was it, the Atlas V rocket that they launched at the time, or was it the four? I don't know, it was a long time ago. But they had a, the unique thing about Vandenberg Air Force Base is they had the ability to get a northern or a polar orbit out of that launch facility. Whereas uh, uh, Cape Canaveral or Florida launch facilities had a, a, a equatorial type orbit that they could achieve. And even though this may sound like I'm being really sarcastic, I'm, <laughs> I'm just giving you the facts as I know them. See that dust? It is windy as heck here. That's another reason I was quick. Because the stuff on the ground would get picked up and you could just feel it. I'm like, any place where you have to wear a hazmat suit, which they don't necessarily have to wear here, but they have a lot of respirator uh, apparatus, a lot of respiration, uh, respirator protection devices. Um, my, I would highly encourage, see, even just me encouraging people to find another line of work sounds like a, a disparaging comment about what they're doing. And I'm, I, I don't disparage them. Um, I know people do what they can to get work. So, I mean, you do what you got to do. Um. I just feel for anybody working in this type of environment, and it's not just here, but there's environments like this all over the U.S. that I'm sure they meet OSHA standards. But back to my story, Vandenberg Air Force Base. Um, I remember one time they had a uh, fueling issue on one of the space launch, not an ICBM, because that what they do is they take, um, in case you didn't know this, and this is not top secret or secret, uh, this is readily known information. What they do, the U.S. does is they randomly pick ICBM missiles uh, from our inventory to test them to uh, see how they're doing. Now, of course, they take the munitions and they do not launch it with the vehicle. They just test the space launch vehicle. 
And so what they'll do is they'll take the vehicle and bring it, uh, disassemble the, the munitions or the warhead and they ship it to Vandenberg Air Force Base. And this is just the knowledge I have of Vandenberg. If there's any other um, uh, situations in which they do this at other locations, I don't know about it. Um, so anyway, they disassemble it, bring the missile to, or the ICBM missile to Vandenberg Air Force Base. They stick it in a launch facility just like it was in uh, Minot, North Dakota, or Wyoming, or, or Montana, wherever the launch facilities are, and they test that you know they fire it in the air it launches out into the Pacific and they're like all right the missiles are working so they're just testing it well one time they were preparing a space launch vehicle which is separate from the ICBMs this was a vehicle that launches into space carrying satellites or whatever and uh, I'm just trying to keep an eye out because apparently people that are going to give me my paperwork are supposed to show up that's the only reason I have time to talk, even talk right now because I'm trying to get out of here one time they had a, uh, th is it Thorazine? Crap. I had the word, the chemical word in my mind before I started this video and now I can't remember. Hydrazine, hydrazine. Um, a fuel component for this space launch vehicle that was leaking. And Vandenberg Air Force Base is a fairly large land-based facility because of the launch facilities they have. They have to have a lot of acreage in order to accommodate safety factors. Uh, anyway, uh, in my position where I worked, we responded with an ambulance and crew to be able to handle anybody that got exposed and whatnot to this kind of chemical, which I don't know if we were necessarily ready to uh, handle on scene, but we'd be able to take care of them as best possible, as best as possible, and then transport them to the nearest uh, medical facility on base to handle any conditions they may be experiencing as a result of their exposure. But anyway, I, I've while I was there, I was the driver of the ambulance, you know. I, I knew how to get everywhere on base because that's what I did on weekends. I, there was not much else to do but other than explore the base. So I was really familiar with, like, every road on, on all these launch facilities, north and south base, because there's two different sections. Anyway, Tangent City today, huh? Um, while we were there... Uh, you could see this greenish cloud. It, maybe it wasn't green, but that's what my mind was telling me right now, that that cloud was, there was like a greenish cloud at the base of the launch facility. You could visibly see the vapor from the hydrazine. And I want, I could be wrong on the name, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Anyway, uh, the big fear was, is that this, the wind would pick up and start blowing this stuff towards um, the local communities. So they had uh, bioenvironmental engineers with their sensors out everywhere around this facility. And they all have special gear. But anyway, uh, while I was there in the ambulance, they gave me this uh, oxygen mask set. It's, it's, um, it's a, uh, I used to use this all the time when I was flying and now I can't remember the name. It's basically a, a bag with a rubber seal around the bottom and you open it up and there's a little oxygen canister on it and it fills it up like a Jiffy Pop bag and it's got you know it's like a yellow tinted bag you can see through it and they said if anything happens you put this on and drive us out of here in case the the cloud came towards us so I, I relate that story because of the situation I'm in now reminds me or makes me think of that type of situation because I could uh, as you can see the different shifts are leaving maybe this is the guy I need to get my paperwork but uh, so there's my load it I'm in I am in Illinois and I am going to Michigan there is a, a power facility really close to where I'm at I, I'll say this, I'm, I'm in the vicinity of Rockwell, but not really, but kind of close, but not really, not really close. That's just the part of Illinois I'm in. I'm, I'm basically in the upper northern part of Illinois, if that helps you understand why. And I just don't say the place because I just don't want the hassle of having to deal with any legal repercussions. Because <laughs> I like to play it safe. <laughs>